So I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Armin Schwarzbach to us today. Um, many of you will already be familiar with him, I'm sure. He's the founder and medical director of Armin Labs Augsburg in Germany and was co-founder and um, CEO of the Borreliosis Clinic Augsburg in Germany too. He's a medical doctor as well as a specialist in laboratory medicine with three decades of experience and laboratory testing. He's conducted um, many tens of thousands of tests for patients with Lyme disease and co-infections and is now um, very, very pleased to be able to introduce tests for SARS-CoV-2, which is the um, underlying, the causative factor, he'll be explaining that more, of um, COVID-19. And so I think um, without further ado, let's go over to you, Armin. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the attendees here um, late today <laughs> before Easter. Um, yes, we have very chaotic situation, especially here in Bavaria. Um, you saw the statistics. Uh, we started, um, I think, two weeks before you. Um, two weeks ago, um, before us, it was in Carinthia. Two weeks um, before, it was in um, Milano, Lombardia. Um, so nobody expected that situation. Um, and yes, um, but it's a really horrible situation for all of us. We are sitting in the same boats. So it's not different what happen, what's happening here to your situation. Um, we are also hotspot in Munich. Um, you see that I live in the surroundings of Munich and now I am doing a lot of testings um, for this uh, COVID patients now. Yeah. Could, could um, I begin by asking you, Armin, what the difference is between SARS COV2, which is the name of the actual um, tests that you'll be doing, and um, COVID-19. Could you just explain that distinction? Yeah, the SARS family is an older family. It's not a new thing. Uh, we have a professor from Trosten here. He is an expert for that. It's I think it's 10 years ago. Um, there was um, also with the SARS virus, um, there was a, they feared also some kind of epidemic or uh, maybe pandemic. And by this, um, it's a new variation of that uh, coming in. Um, it's a COVID-19, the SARS variation, COV2, it's named, um, which is more aggressive, more virulent, we name it, and um, which uh, is getting more uh, pandemic now. Mm, thank you. So um, the tests that you're doing are called SARS-CoV-2, but if you're positive for those, then you'll be explaining to us what that means. So um, what's the difference, first of all, please, between a PCR test, I believe that stands for real-time polymerase chain reaction, and an antibody test? Yes, the PCR, um, as you already explained, is the polymerase chain reaction. It won the Nobel Prize in medicine, I think 20 years ago, 25 years ago by HIV infections. It became very famous, the method. Um, it's a direct test. Um, you look directly for the pathogen, whatever we know it from HIV in the bloodstream. We know it from hepatitis B virus. Um, we know it from influenza virus. Now it's a covid uh, 19, the SARS uh, variation, COV-2 virus. Um, antibody test is completely different. This is indirect test. Um, indirect test um, we are doing also for Lyme disease, for Borrelia. We do antibodies, Western blots or ELISA. Um, this is a test where we look indirectly for immune reactions by antibodies. Antibodies are IgG, IgA, IgM. Uh, we are also doing for Lyme disease and other infections, for other viruses, for chlamydia. So um, the PCR is always um, the best method to detect directly the pathogen. Um, what is, um, we know, all know in Borrelia, Bogdorferi infection, very complicated, but for the uh, SARS, this acute respiratory syndrome virus. It's not so difficult because it's enriched in our uh, saliva and um, also we can find it in the pulmonary system because it makes acute respiratory problems with cough or breathlessness with a, and um, it's acute situation. So um, it's really dangerous for immune compromised uh, 
patients what you see here everywhere and also for patients um, with pathologic preconditions like diabetes or uh, asthma or allergies uh, or um, yeah let me say everybody who has an illness with cancer and a weak immune system has a high risk um, to get complications by the acute uh, really aggressive virus thank you and you've explained to me that the um genetic sequence that you're testing for in the PCR test is, is very specific. It's well char characterized. Um, yes. What is it that you're actually using when you do an antibody test? That isn't a, a piece of genetic material, as it were, is it? Yeah. Um, every pathogen has different antibody structures and also for the SARS-CoV-2. Um, um, the protocol for the PCR was developed by Charité, Professor Drosten here not far away, because he was the German SARS specialist 10 years ago and it was his special field in, I think in Europe also, to work with this virus um, genetic code. And then he found it out and then he developed an in-house PCR. Uh, so the PCR is not actually CE certified test. Um, all PCRs you're doing are uh, in-house, own developed according to protocol from Professor Drosten. He officialized the protocol and then a lot of test producers just, I don't I want to make some marketing, but a Roche company developed um, as an example, also this PCR by the machines, but still um, it's not a certified technique. So it has not the precondition to be accredited testings, if you want to discuss accredited testing. Um, this, but we all believe in that. And um, I think with a very high probability and specificity, exactly, uh, we find um, this uh, SARS, um, pathogen directly, these structures, this genetic code, if you do it from a swap. Uh, or where we are working now on cell line, cell line solutions that you uh, can spit into. You will get later an explanation how this works because the swaps are not so nice to have. And we have big problems now what we know that a lot of swaps uh, are false negative because the technique of the swap maybe was not the correct one done by an unexperienced doctor and maybe somebody who keeps distance from you. You say, oh, it's a patient. I have a risk to get infected. I will come very close. Okay, I'm protected. But uh, a swap you need to put into your nose, into the deep pharynx, I think it's named, and to bring it really from the deep. And if you don't do that um, correctly, it will be false negative. But if it's positive, then you can say it's really nearly 100% positive because it detects exactly the genetic code uh, of this SARS-CoV-2 variation virus. The antibody is different. Antibody is ELISA technique we have now. Um, and in the quick test, we have a lateral flow um, assay technique. You will see later some examples how it works and how it looks like. Um, the ELISA is a very well characterized method in laboratory medicine. It's a very sensitive method. Um, it's better than the IA FA. Um, it's also maybe a little better than Western blot or Munoblot. So this technique for the ELISA is uh, from HRV. You can could compare it with the HRV ELISA. Um, you put um, some antibodies from the patient uh, or the serum, we say, where you expect the antibodies, you put it from the vein, and then you bring this um, uh, serum into a test system, an ELISA test system, where on the bottom is also the high specific part of this uh, COV-2 virus, SARS-CoV-2 virus antigen. It's an antigen antibody reaction. That means it's indirect test. It's from your blood. Uh, the PCR in the difference is directly done by the swab. It's uh, directly try to isolate this genetic code of the virus uh, from your nose or the pharynx or from your pulmonary system. Um, you can also do that uh, from this side. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I think you've said with the antibody tests, they are CE certified and also have the IVD yes. um, validation. Yes. And could you explain a little bit about the difference between IgA, IgM and IgG, all of which you're offering now? Yeah. Um... IgM is the antibody in every fresh infection. You produce an IgM antibody. It's coming three days earliest time. Um, if we would have an early spot now, the early spot would uh, detect the infection within the first and second day already, so earlier than antibody. 
Um, the production of the antibodies we know now from this uh, SARS uh, uh, virus, uh, um, it starts um, when you get symptomatic, not before. So you need to get symptomatic um, to find antibodies, IgM in the first step. Also, your body is producing IgM antibodies because IgA is the only antibody we have in the mucus. It's an um, uh, antibody produced um, in, um, on the surface of um, your uh, nose as an example. So it has two binding arms. Um, it's a natural immune defense mechanism. It starts this um, after, let me say, five, six, seven, days, 10 days, we say for sure, okay, in this COVID situation. So you see COVID is reacting different than other pathogens. It, the immune system uh, reacts slowly in this, what we know nowadays. The IgG antibodies, these are, we all know it's a former antibody. We say it's a former infection or a past infection, it's better to say in English. That means the IgA is, IgG, sorry, is coming after the IgM, then the IgA is coming um, nearly the same period of time, the first week, and then the oh, IgG okay. is coming after, uh, let me say, two, three weeks. Uh, it's different. Every immune system is different from the other. Um, so we cannot uh, do a postulation. Now I need IgG uh, to be evident on day 20 after I get symptomatic. Um, but what we know by the studies now done uh, for sure that um, the antibodies are within three weeks after you have symptoms, nearly 100% of the patients with this infection produce antibodies. Three weeks. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, 21 days. 21 days. This yeah. is a Chinese, was a Chinese study. We have other studies uh, which say, okay, after 10 days, you already produce antibodies after getting symptomatic to be on a safe site to find antibodies. I would not do antibodies um, <laughs> the first week. Um, it doesn't make really a sense. Um, or maybe you have, you have single case reports. It makes a sense if the swab is negative and you have typical symptoms uh, for um, uh, the COVID infection then um, you could do um, the IgA and IgG antibodies because we have some single case reports that uh, the antibodies are there and the swab is negative. It, mm -hmm. It's single reports from China. But uh, normally your immune system should develop antibodies two, three weeks. So I would be on a, a safer side if you do it three weeks after you have started your cough. It's a starting point when you started with your cough or with your uh, gut issues, your diarrhea or the headache or the fever or the breathlessness. Um, so or, um, uh, some cannot smell anything we know from patients I discussed with. So you have different symptoms. Um, the virus is not clearly characterized, uh, but what we know nowadays, um, we have two weeks incubation time no antibodies, swab is negative. This is a dangerous time because you're running around. You have a little virus in your nose or your throat. You're maybe not coughing and it's so high contagious um, that you can infect, uh, you are completely un uh, asymptomatic that you can infect others. Okay, thank you. And do we know yet whether antibodies confer immunity? Normally one considers IgG to confer a degree of immunity in most um, pathogens, but with this one, do we know that yet? This is a question I get every day. Um, we cannot confirm that because we don't have any data about that. Uh, we can say, okay, IgG means a past infection or an active infection, still it's ongoing, we don't know. We don't know if an infection can be persistent in single cases. We don't know if it can be reactivated. We don't know, simply don't know. Um, but we say in the general rule, what we know from a study from Schwabing, it's uh, the first um, German population was not far away from the Be Bebasto company where I live. In uh, February, they got uh, a Chinese uh, guy bringing in it and we had already a hot hotspot of, I think, 15 infected. And they know now that the first week, it's uh, the virus is highly concentrated in your saliva. The first week you get a cough and then you are highly highly in, in infectious uh, for others, highly. So it's, but after one week, um, they said in this population that the virus is getting killed. 
more or less, or we don't know exactly if it's for all patients, but we can say, okay, after one week, um, you are not high, con uh, high contaminated and it's not high, high active um, in your nose, in your throat or your pulmonary system, although you have maybe cough. Um, but we don't know um, actually if um, your immune system is bringing all of this um, a virus is protein. It's simply a protein structure. It needs us uh, to survive. It uses our mitochondria, our ATP, otherwise it's getting killed. So it needs our, it's living intracellular like all of the viruses. Um, but what you can say if you um, getting uh, the, the uh, swap positive in the first week, that within two weeks when you have started symptoms, there's a, a high probability that after these two weeks uh, you could leave your quarantine. So in Germany we sent all the people after two weeks um, with proven swab, proven infections, direct testing, PCR testing, we sent them out of quarantine when they are symptom free. We don't control the swaps. Um, I think in the future we need to control the swaps also because we don't know how many could have persistent infections. But uh, we don't have so many testings. Uh, the problem is, I think we do 300,000 in Germany every day, every day, but this is not enough. And we have now the problem that the test producers <laughs> for this PCR are not coming behind because we need millions of swaps here in Germany, millions. Yeah, yeah. Well, would you say then that it's more sensible to do a PCR test first and then an antibody test? Or for, I know you're offering both. Or, or is it best, from England at least, to wait those days that you've just mentioned and then do the antibody test? There's no question, no doubt about it. If you're getting symptomatic, if you say this is really a tuberkulosis influenza for me and maybe your uh, life partner has the same situation and you're all coughing and you get breathlessness and you get all the symptoms, you need to do the PCR. There's no discussion about that immediately as soon as possible. I know that we have some problems. Um, also, a laboratory nearby is doing 2,000 swaps a day, uh, and they cannot do 2,000 in a row. <laughs> this is a, a problem. So you need one, two, three days to get the results. Um, this is really a critical phase. So the first thing is you have clinically, by your symptoms, your emergency case, you need to go to the hospital or wherever you, I don't know, your British system. We have here a number for doctors coming here, uh, try uh, checking you, and then they say they're protected. It's a, a phone number, and then they send you uh, maybe to hospital or let bring them to hospital with breathlessness if they're older people, or they put you under quarantine if you're not so symptomatic. They say, okay, we, we, we check you day by day. We call you if you're still fine. Um, but nevertheless, they do a swap with you. There's, they don't do the antibodies, you understand? So in the acute phase, uh, don't do the antibodies. The antibodies are not the indication for the acute phase, the one week phase. Uh, maybe in single cases, it could help a little if the swab is negative and you say, oh, I have still the cough the first week, but then you're still infectious and I would not do a taking blood with you. <laughs> I would say stay in your house two weeks and then we will see what is happening with you or if you get more symptoms because you know by your uh, Prime Minister Johnson that he was one week really not so bad and after one week he got the uh, second uh, problem and he went to intensive care for a while or I don't know what the current yes, situation he, he is. He is still there. Yeah. Okay, so um, this is, um, but when should we do now the antibodies? The antibodies, um, it's clear, um, it's not for the acute situation. No, no go, and uh, no way. The antibodies you could do two to three weeks after you had the cough or unclear cough to check if your body is proven the infection. If you have IgG antibodies, you have a high probability that you had it. Um, the specificity of the IgG is up to 97.5%. It's a high probability. It's not proving that, but it's all. it can also be something else, but it's a high, high probability. And if your uh, partner has a swap positive and you have the antibodies, your partner has the antibodies, 
I think it's nearly proven that you had it also without uh, any huge symptoms or your swap is maybe negative in this case. Hmm? So we have some indications um, and the IgG, IgA is equivocal. We don't differentiate now with IgG, IgA findings. We know that IgA has um, some unspecific reactions in blood donors. It's around 12%. We found it in blood donors, but not in 100% of the blood donors. So in over 85% of the not plant donors, and if you have the symptoms for um, this uh, um, SARS infection, uh, then it's clear that it cannot be something else, you understand? So always the clinical picture, like in Lyme disease, and then you do the antibodies, not just doing antibodies. I want to screen myself if I had this. Um, maybe we can discuss the situation in exposure situations. So if you went skiing or to, um, uh, northern Italy um, uh, and you got maybe all of your uh, family is infected and uh, your, your friends are infected and you had also some cough then for sure it makes sense because you have the exposure and if you find an IgG antibodies this is a clear sign that you had this yes. infection maybe you, with no not not huge symptoms in this case. You, you do have a questionnaire don't you with um, both yes. symptoms yes. Uh, being um, Yes. listed and also exposure history so that yeah. sounds but, sensible. but sorry this is not um this is not um sub substituting uh, a doctor's clinical um, decision no of anything. course that is only for health professionals we've yes. made it here and this um, you know also for patients webinar is also Yes. Also, also the uh, checklist can be used surely for patients or for people who don't know all about the symptoms. This is WHO and Robert Koch Institute. We collected all the evidence-based symptoms on it. Yeah. Um, some people are deficient in various immunoglobulins. Um, they might have, for example, an IgG deficiency. Does that affect these tests, do you think? Yes, um, we have also IgA deficiencies, interestingly. <laughs> uh, so we know that from celiac disease. So we always check IgA totally for celiac, for endomuseum antibodies or uh, celiac antibodies, uh, because you could have IgA deficiencies uh, by resorption problems. Uh, some people have that without knowing, and then it could be false negative for sure, yes. That, that's what you call the non-responders, I think, but that's a very small proportion, isn't it? No, non-responders. It's this is a really complicated thing with oh, this uh, virus. I have a lot of data now from cohorts, from different discussions with positive patients, patients after swap. Uh, I tested week by week, and uh, now to find out when antibodies are coming in this clearly characterized patients with uh, infection for sure. So um, what we can say, it's also some kind of chameleon. Also, uh, negative antibodies cannot exclude an infection before for sure. Also positive uh, cannot prove 100%. Um, we, uh, you need always the clinical picture, you need the exposure, the same with Lyme disease, we have always the same discussion because the indirect tests um, from this side, uh, it's better to have a direct test which proves you the infection in the beginning. But if you don't have it, the question is what to do with all of the people uh, who have silent infection without any huge symptoms. I, I find a lot of patients, uh, people uh, they are completely uh, no symptoms, but they have high positive IgG, IgA. Maybe they lived in a community together or they work uh, together with other people. But in my opinion, it's good if you already had the contact. Um, this um, uh, infection is like a big vaccination with a very aggressive virus. Normally, we use these viruses uh, for vaccination attenuated in a weakened version to do the vaccination. Yeah. But this is really a, a big, big threat for all of us. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. Well, just to cover, before we go on to a few more general questions, um, just to cover the tests that you're actually doing, um, you began with an IgG, IgA test, which is the ELISA test that you mentioned earlier. And that's a test that can be accessed via um, the Academy, AUNM. Just please call the helpline and then we'll sort of sort that for you. It does need to be done via a health professional. Um, and then there's the IgG, IgM that you're doing, which is um, available either as a sort of little pregnancy test type kit, isn't it, that people can do, again, please, with their health professional um, by themselves mm -hmm. and see the result immediately. Um, maybe um, I'll just explain how the other um, form of that works, because with that one, the only 
downside, um, even though that is cheaper, it's about half the price of, of sending it to Germany, as it were, but you don't get a report with that one. You just get the, I mean, it's almost best to sort of video yourself doing it or a photograph of it, and then you have the evidence, right? But it's still not quite the same as having a report. And the alternative is if you can get serum over to Germany, then they'll um, use the same kit. That's why it's called a quick test. They will actually, after centrifuging it, put the blood into that little um, pregnancy test type kit and get the result and um, then write a full report for you. Maybe, I don't know if Marcus is there and could show us the little kit for the IgG IgM. Um, can Marcus sort of open up his screen? Oh, yeah. okay, he's in Germany with Armin, yeah. Um, so those are um, the little kits for actually the, the, the quick test. And um, so you have different results. So you, uh, I hope you can you can all see it. So uh, for example, that one is for example it's a negative one. Um, you see a positive control line means the test is valid, but you don't have um, an IgM or you don't have an IgG. Um, for example, for that one, that one has also a positive control line. You see the uh, the line on the C, so it's a valid test. We don't have an IgM, but we had a reaction um, while having or for the IgG. Means, um, yeah, positive antibody test and positive quick test. Thank you. About, um, I mean, 1. 7, I think 17.5 million of these from China are now being returned because they were not found to be accurate enough here in the UK. I believe yours was developed in Germany and you're very satisfied mm -hmm. after, you know, endless testing mm -hmm. that is, um, uh, you know, achieving a very high specificity mm -hmm. and um, sensitivity. That's correct, isn't it? Yeah, we need uh, not to say all Chinese tests are bad, okay? Mm -hmm. um, it depends on the companies, on how they do it, on the validation steps. Um, I tested, I think three weeks ago, I had patients in my laboratory with clearly positive swab before. Uh, they were three weeks under current, two weeks under quarantine, then they were sent outside again. And I um, did Chinese <laughs> uh, quick tests with them and they failed completely. So I said something is going wrong because I expect antibodies in this clearly characterized uh, patients with swab positive. Um, by uh, I tested the next Chinese, also no antibodies in the quick test. Um, then I got uh, one test uh, from Germany from a friend of mine. Oh, try it out. It's a German test. Maybe it's not so officialized. I tried it out and it was fantastic. I said, wow. Uh, IgG, the same I found with in this characterized patients with the ELISA, the same IgG. So 100% in the serum, in the serum, that was the first step. So um, serum has the, uh, or the venous blood has the, has the big, huge advantage. You can really have a standardized um, volume of that. In the finger, you can do mistakes. Mm -hmm. uh, so the quick tests don't be long. I think you have the warning now in England, don't be long into unprofessional hands in this critical infection. Yeah. Because if you think it's false negative, like the Chinese uh, ones, you believe you're negative, but maybe you're positive, or you had already IgG, and um, this is a wrong message to you. So um, I, I prefer always, not the finger, if you know me, I prefer the serum. Um, nevertheless, we have uh, standardized. Um, in the next step, I, I also checked this uh, German quick test, uh, or Germany produ German produced quick test, uh, um, I also standardized for the finger and it works also really good. So we can give it free. It's validated in the laboratory for serum and finger comparable uh, to the ELISA technique. With the yeah, IgG. I think it's the, the second drop of blood you suggest using rather than the first, right? To yes, avoid because in, in, in the first you have a little uh, lymph, lymph, uh, lymphatic fluid and uh, um, you can get artificial effects on it. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it comes with clear instructions, I know. And yes. um, yeah, okay. Well, um, anybody who would like further information on all of those tests, do um, just contact the AUNM helpline number. Interestingly, you mentioned earlier the alternative way of doing a PCR swab test if you don't want to make mistakes um, with the swab. Could you explain a little bit more how that one will work with the saline? Uh, this could Marcus better explain because he cared more for that part. Okay. 
So uh, yeah, there I am again. <laughs> um, so we developed um, a different option also because um, yes, for some materials, the producers are just out of the of the swap test. So um, since you still have a high viral load also in your throat and in your sputum, um, we have um, an alternative option available. So um, this tube contains NACL solution. Um, you get it delivered with a straw. You get it in your mouth. You kind of gargle it for 30 seconds and you spit it back into the um, yeah into the um, tube and send it to us in the, um, to the laboratory. That's kind of the alternative version of the of the swab test and um, yeah, which is also way easier to perform. So you can be quite sure you do it correctly and um, yeah, you catch a high viral load. Yeah, maybe send it via Express. I believe that doesn't need to go via the uh, sort of exempt human materials um, courier system. So that's easier to get back to the lab as well, isn't it? Yeah. We, have a we have a proven stability. I know different uh, PCR experts in the world. So we have a proven stability for minimum three days. Um, mm -hmm. So it's like Elispot sending. Um, it's not so time critical. Um, it's the same with the swap. Also three days. Uh, we think, uh, or I know from experts, it's up to five, six, seven days we can do the testings. Because the concentration, if it's really positive in your throat or in your nose or in your saliva, it's so high concentrated that we will find that. Um, also, what the I think the huge advantage now is uh, with this uh, not swap technique with the uh, saline solution, we can use it for children. I will have a, a child on Tuesday, one year in my laboratory, and to do a swap with a child, uh, I don't think it's a very funny thing with uh, children and younger people. And uh, if you don't like that, I think it's really a good alternative not to do so much damage with you. Yes, I, people have been reporting how much the swab test actually hurts. Mm, it's like yes. piercing their brain, some have been saying. Yes. Um, I'm sure there'll be a few questions, so we'll look at those in a moment relating to the testing. But um, just a, a more general question now, please. There seem to be far fewer cases of COVID-19 in Germany than in, um, say, Italy or Spain or even the UK now. Um, do you know why that might be? Um, the main reason is um, the Italian did mistakes for sure. They didn't know about that. And the uh, Italian people live very close together in the cafes. They have a lot of older people stay staying very close. They live in the families, in the houses. It's a different structure than in London. Uh, you don't see so many older people outside on London Street. Um, nevertheless, you have younger people, you have immune compromised people in London, as an example. Um, that was one of the bad things uh, Italy is suffering or suffering from now a really mm -hmm. horrible situation um, on the other side in Germany um, we followed up the Austrian rules from Kurz we came maybe a little too late um, we didn't protect um, the older people so much in the beginning now it's better protected when they live in communities older people here they are high risk group you, you know that by statistics uh, most of the older people died uh, it, uh, it's 80 plus or so 75 plus um, also in Italy, the problem was, um, although uh, Conte did the law that they are not allowed uh, running around younger people uh, in um, Lombardia, they did Corona parties and so they infected, mm. like in South Africa now happening, or in other, um, they did really parties, partying. We had here in Bavaria a Corona beer party and the mm. whole village after that was um, police uh, <laughs> isolated after that party. Oh. Uh, they they did simply Simply they underestimated this aggressiveness, uh, aggressiveness of the virus. The younger people they say, I cannot be, uh, get the infection, but you know in England also younger people died, but I saw on the news. Um, it's no guarantee for you that you will not, uh, cannot get huge problems, intensive care, but surely the probability for older people is much higher um, than for younger people. And also one important message, uh, when you would send me a swap, I definitely will destroy that. Um, also, we, we will not uh, keep the swap because it's useless for us. The whole tube uh, will be burned after that. Oh, will. that's very important for us to know, I think. So there'll be no genetic material no. retained by your laboratory at all. No, strongly controlled, strongly controlled. Yeah, I know the genetic laws are very, very strict in Germany. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. Could I just uh, move on now to a few questions that we've already received um, in the Q&A um, section here, which is um, we're hearing about people getting reinfected. So how can one be assured of being safe to come out of quarantine? Do you have any ideas about that? Mm. Obviously, that will be a political question as well. But um, are you already <laughs> hearing from your point of view some uh, that, that, on that in Germany? Uh, different uh, aspects. How safe is the uh, reinfection? Maybe it was a persistent infection and the second swap was false negative. Okay, it was not correctly done as an example. Or the concentration of the virus was not high enough. I, I know from cases that have persistent infections uh, longer than the two weeks and if the swap is still positive after two weeks, they put this uh, people, also doctors, uh, another two weeks under quarantine hoping that the swap is negative. So some are saying now in Germany, oh, I don't do a swap because if it's still positive, I need to stay in my house for maybe two months or so. Who knows how long it could persist the virus. The other question is, is it now uh, what you had in the second test where you estimate a react reactive uh, reinfection? Um, it could be maybe a, a genetic variation of the virus. We don't know if there's a shift or drift, we name it, like influenza, but uh, there's no proof for it in the uh, current phase. Um, on the other side, it could be dead virus uh, or part of the dead virus uh, in your mouth where you still spit it. It's protein. It's simply protein. So the swap uh, could be still positive, but it's not the active virus. Uh, okay. Well, I'm assuming that as the studies come through and as further information builds, mm -hmm. you'll, you'll have a collection of that for us to access and also it'll be sure. publicly available, hopefully. Sure. Another question here is, um, I'll just read it out. It's quite long. Will the antibody test pick up if you only have a very low viral load and mild symptoms, e.g. a high temperature but no cough? I've heard that the antibody tests developed in China were done on hospital patients with high viral loads and they may not be sensitive enough to pick up the antibody response to a mild infection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a huge chapter to see. <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of um, own patients. I know them personally. And uh, what I can tell you, um, the stronger the immune system is fighting, the higher is the concentration of IgG and IgA. So I had a population of clearly characterized patients with high IgG titers, and they are now, uh, they went uh, for a university clinic to donate the IgG antibodies from their blood. They did it last week. Also mm -hmm. Hanover University, they try to give then afterwards this IgG, high specific IgG from them after my test to patients uh, uh, which are uh, on intensive care with really bad illness, um, bad symptoms. This is one part of the story, but I can tell you by my first experience with um, a lot of patients, case definitions, case discussions, that the IgA, IgM, um, especially IgA, should uh, will play an important role in this um, infection. And I can tell you also that the older you are, the more difficult it's for you to produce any antibodies. So um, we will find also patients immune compromised, uh, they get corticosteroids or have subclass deficiencies, they cannot produce IgG enough. And the next thing is um, the test system we are using uh, or all the laboratories are using, they are characterized by uh, patients in hospitals, not uh, afterwards and running around patients. We have the same situation with uh, Lyme, ELISA and Western plots where you characterize the cutoffs for children, for babies, etc. So there are a lot, a lot of questions behind that for sure, but um, you, we need to start with something and I can tell you if you shown IgG or IgA we, and you had the symptoms three weeks ago, we could say with a very high probability that you had this infection. Mm. Um, it's a past infection. We cannot say now uh, you have immunity forever. This is nobody will tell you or document for your immunity by that. But you have uh, surely by IgG, you have surely protection. IgG yeah. means always protecting IgG and is in every vaccination. Well, well I mean, um, evidence will build gradually about that, won't it, as well? We'll know a lot more in a month than in two months. Sure. Um, 
also i remember you saying to me that your tests are very sensitive i mean very sensitive yeah it's uh, up to testing. 100 yeah. uh, the elisa is uh, up to 100 percent um 89 to 100 and the um germ cook test is also 85 this is fa fantastic data for this test systems yeah. please yeah. we think about the swaps um if you see all the false negatives um maybe it's 80 percent or so yeah, yeah. Um, just if you could confirm, confirm, I think you've already mentioned this, but if you could confirm again another question from a doctor here. Um, after how many days can we do the throat swab? And or for how many days can we do the throat swab? And after how many days IgG? <laughs> This is always uh, this is also a very good question. I thought also about that. Um, the swap uh, makes sense the first week or the first two weeks maximum. So you get the cough now and then do the swap. So you can also do the second day, the third day, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh. But after that, maybe it's more dead virus you find in the swap, eight, nine, ten, uh, two weeks two weeks after getting symptomatic. That makes also sense. So my next plan is to do swaps additionally to antibodies. What I told you before, you will find nearly 100% of the IgG antibodies two to three weeks after symptoms. So if we would do now in a concept in the world, three weeks after getting symptomatic, or maybe exposure, don't forget the exposure situation in the families, you will be surprised how many don't feel anything. This is the dark number. I can tell you that the dark number is tremendous in Germany. I, I, I have seen the patient completely asymptomatic. A patient was traveling with cough to Dubai, a German patient, I talked with him five weeks ago. He had the cough. He was IgGIGA positive. Uh, so nobody cared for that. He was sitting in a plane or he was infected by a Chinese guy in Dubai. I don't know. So you see all of this um, a chain where a chain of these infections where you can get infected is tremendous high. But the more we select out of that with IgG positivity, we find the chains out. By that okay you could say oh and his family now we check his family if the family has igg or maybe iga then we see if the family had it you know so it gives you a feeling of a little safety in this panicking situation you know the people in germany are getting crazy they get depressions uh, one politician was uh, doing suicide uh, in, I in, in suicide. Hessen, where I, i'm from yeah he was jumping minister. for 10 yeah, he could not uh, tolerate this. It's, uh, we have also in Lyme, I don't want to overinterpret Lyme, but also we know from the, all of this infection, you get crazy. You are, we are like in a prison here, you know? Absolutely. Also for the children, the, uh, the social conflicts there. You know, there's village fighting against village. They said, why did, why did you do this Corona beer party? Now we have a death case. My mother died by that. You know, they did this partying, you understand? That's and I know right. from this village, they are fighting against now uh, on a psychological war. It's not that they have weapons in Bavaria. Um, but on this side, um, the more we know about that, the more IgG we find, the more we find antibodies, the better it is. It's clear. It's, okay. it's absolutely clear that yeah. the way in the future will be a passport for antibodies or a passport uh, if you had the vaccination. It's clear, like in every uh, influenza, in every infection, in yellow fever, we do it also. We do the same yeah, in the yeah. countries. Yeah. This um, question that's um, come in is um, about the S and the L strain. The um, participant is asking, um, do you test for different strains, and um, particularly the S and the L strain that has been discussed in some quarters, would you say that those two strains are being covered by your test? One yes. is said to be more um, virulent mm. than the other. Um, the test producers put the S1 domain in it, so and um, they did also studies with it, and we believe more in the S1 domain, but you can be sure other tests will follow by ELISA, which will also differentiate uh, both. You can okay. be sure. I cannot tell you all about that, but I know what will happen now in the world in the test production. And but the problem is the limited availability for antibody testings. This will be really a problem for all of the us. limited availability. You said, yes, did you? Yes, Sorry, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And and yes. then um, another uh, part of that question is: um, Could you please comment on Iceland, a study there, having found forty different strains? Would you say that your tests are sensitive enough to pick up all of those or does that need further study to be verified? 
This is a good question. Maybe it will fill the gap of this sensitivity. We have the sensitivity still 89% and um, to nearly 100. So we have still to fill something in by different variations, I'm sure. That's the same question you would ask me, Armin, do you check for my motto in the same spot? Do you check for Garinia, Afzelia? For sure, we have cross reactions in the test systems, but um, the specificity and the sensitivity surely depends on the antigens you put into a test system that's clear so you'll probably be tracking that very very closely all the developments and we might yes sure sure know, sensibly i think have another another sure. call with you in a month's time and find out what the research has shown and how far things have developed yeah, I, I have my networks everywhere in the world now, or in Europe, I would say. Uh, the point is, um, all of these tests we are doing, don't forget that, the PCR is not certified yet. Mm -hmm. It will happen end of um, April, maybe in Germany, then it's IVD registered. Um, so that um, we have also weakness of some PCR techniques, you know, so mm -hmm. we will also have borderline results or weak positive results. Um, the PCR is also weaknesses. Um, there's no laboratory method 1000% proving anything in the world. Always the clinical picture, we come higher to probability um, to find IgG. Maybe some have more IgA, some have more IgG. And the very sick people, what I have heard, have very high IgG titers because it's getting very systemic on intensive care, the infection. Yeah. Is there anything that people can do if they already know that they tend towards low IgG or IgM, their immunoglobulins are low? Is there any additional test or, or sort of confirmation they can do in order to work no, out what's happening? There's no chance. There's no chance. Um, maybe the Illispot will fill the gap if we have that. Are you, are you thinking that there'll be groups working on that? I'm sure we need to check the TH1 immune system for sure. It's mm -hmm. like tuberculosis because if somebody is not producing antibodies, we use the quantiferone test or Melisa test or Elispot test for that. Sure. Could, could, could the CD50, the CD3, CD57 sh shed any light on that? Absolutely. CD3 is really helpful in acute uh, virus infections getting high. In oh. chronic in chronic virus infections, getting low. CD57 cells is getting high in virus infections, and it's getting low in bacterial infections. So we have wonderful thing. Everything depends on the cellular immune system. It's it's absolutely clear this, uh, like every virus. Mm -hmm. So the stronger you under the CD3 and the natural killer cells, the better it is. My CD3 cells are not so nice <laughs> currently, so I, I'm doing also against this something. But you know the stress and all of this is not so good uh, for all of us here. The such a logical stress, um, the we fear the future in Germany economy they're, is they're breaking sleeping. down. Yeah, yeah, and it's not just the sleep; it's also the immune system depends on hormones, stressing factors. Hmm. Mm. Well, would you say then? I mean, who should do a CD three, CD fifty seven in addition to this test then? Because that is a test that you offer. Would that be mm. useful to do if you suspect a low yes. immunity? If you suffer from herpes of the lips, I would do that because you have a weak cellular immune system. If you mm -hmm. suffer from uh, um, varicella zoster reactivations, herpes zoster, mm -hmm. you should do that. You have a bad cellular immune system. If you take in, uh, antibiotics, you have a bad cellular immune system. For sure, if you take corticosteroids, you have a bad cellular immune system. Um, if you take, um, uh, as an example, methotrexate, you have a bad mm -hmm. uh, immune system. So uh, you influence your immune system. Now, uh, our motto needs to be to improve our cellular immune system whatever we can do. Although I know therapists are still attacked with vitamin C infusion and so, but we know from studies it rescued life in China. It rescued yeah, lives yeah. in New York City. You, you've just mentioned corticosteroids um, and mm. methotrexate. If people have recently had corticosteroids, can they do this um, and, and expect a true result? Yes, yes. I don't, I don't see any influences on the um, um, yeah, IgA. I, I think you could do that. It's, it's not the problem. Um, if you use that, maybe you, you will find low CD3 cells, but you say, oh, I have a higher risk than others because I'm cellular immune comp uh, deficient, for sure. But it, sh it shouldn't affect the antibodies or the PCR? No, no, the test is not. Uh, they are t were tested by the test producers in the manuscript, in the uh, validation, and uh, they said there's no influence. Um, yeah. 
Okay, and that's only the Ellie spot then, and that may be developed after, who knows, after a second. Yeah, but Ellie spot time. could be also suppressed. Uh, who knows, you know, um, it's also and, TH1 yeah. testings. Hmm. Are there any uh, medications then that could affect these tests? You mentioned methotrexate a moment ago. Anything else? Mm, antibiotics, long-term high-dose antibiotics, uh, are like chemotherapies, you find low viruses, chronic virus infections, a lot, Coxsackie, Echo, virus, herpes, cytomegalovirus, EBV, the gut is uh, surely a challenge, you see the gut, um, the virus is spreading into the gut in 30% or 60%, whatever, and if you have a gut uh, weakness, uh, the natural immunity is coming from your gut, I think uh, we need to improve the gut situation, good nutrition, uh, no hamburgers, no pizza or no pasta yeah this is not good you know um this fast food generation is, is is not good for your immune system for a natural immune system for sure right right okay well um if there are further questions that come in um would it be okay if we send those in to you and then you do a little bit of a q and a in writing in a newsletter or something and then perhaps we interview you again in about a, a month's time yes um i think maybe we could do on the pretty on your platform a and m you could do some q and a and uh, we can put some news on it if we have mm -hmm. new aspects about testings uh, we are learning now here in germany you will come in a second phase you're not yeah. uh, prepared for that now because um, you are two weeks behind us you know but it will come it will start for sure mm -hmm. if you will get enough tests you know this will be um, really critical phase now uh, like everything with the masks with the protection with the clothes um, um, in Germany, they all collected toilet paper. You saw that. <laughs> so it was sold out. Everybody's thinking by him, himself, I need toilet paper. So I need, um, what is it, hydroxychloroquine. Every hydroxychloroquine know, was yes. sold out. Every mm. vitamin C was sold out. So it's panicking, you know, but you need to come back to a, a good position. Uh, it's, it's a virus. Okay, it's, oh, it's oh. a tragedy. But it's one not, thing not I, killing you immediately. No, one thing I think that would be fair to mention to the therapists on the call at the moment is um, the um, little pregnancy type test kits that you're calling quick tests. If you want mm -hmm. to do those with your patients here in this country, which is, of course, probably um, quite sensible since people are having a hard time having blood drawn at the moment. They can't really go to clinics easily because they're not allowed out. Um, I think you've said... Um, you get one bottle of buffer which is needed for that and several tests in other words you don't get one test and one bottle of buffer mm. so i think it'll be a minimum of um, five tests that people need to get at once with one bottle of buffer so um, that's something that can be discussed um, on our helpline with you how to sort of um, negotiate that but certainly um, mm. you know it won't be 10 tests that one has to get but if one does them via serum and sends them into Germany and gets the full report, then that's on a one by one basis, isn't it? Yeah, this is good. Also, you have um, laboratory uh, doctors, my validation on it. So um, it's checked, it's double checked, it has all the quality. If you do something yourself, you can do that. Um, but um, on the other side, um, you need always documentation, a good documentation for it. You can do that uh, by yourself. I think you can do that if you're a medical professional. Um, mm -hmm. But I would not do it in the hands of patients, uh, this uh, quick testings. Yeah, okay. Well, thank you so, so much. That was absolutely fascinating. Um, very, very excellent information. Is there anything you'd like to add? Anything that you feel you haven't covered? Yeah, uh, by, by this testing, we need this uh, testing more and more. We need the swaps. We need the antibodies in the future. We do, we'll do a lot of IgG, IgA, IgM in the future in the whole world. Um, the, but um, if you have antibody, it's um, I don't have antibody. <laughs> Sorry to say that. If I would have antibody, I would be more relaxed. I would say, okay, I had this already, and my cough uh, was from that, maybe or my tiredness, my fatigue. Um, so if you have the antibody, then the vaccination was done um with a high chance but uh, on the other side it's no guarantee in, uh, to have an antibody but we need to come forward if we have still this panicking and this unclear situation we need to protect ourselves for months and this could not be we need to come forward by good high quality 
antibody testings in the future. We need to check the IgA, how persistent it is. We need to check when the IgJ, we need to name it a zero conversion away from IgA to IgG. When this is happening, I'm working on that too with a case, clearly characterized case studies. We have now in Munich here a network of um, clinics and therapists. They care for the time after COVID um, because we don't know what is happening after that. We need to monitor also very sick patients and also infected patients. Um, so we need um, specialized doctors caring really for it. And uh, not to say um, it will be over in two months, but uh, you, you, we will all manage that. I'm so sure um, it, we will manage that together. And if we can do that together, I help you clearly what I can do for you. I help you in Germany, what I can do with all of my power. Uh, but um, to say an antibody is uh, a test is uh, nothing or so, a swap is nothing. We need testings. You need testings. We need testings. The more you test, the better is the percentage you saw it in Germany. The better yeah. is your chance to come uh, over it. Yeah. Is, is your, your impression already that um, patients who already have Borrelia um, and have um, Lyme disease are at greater risk of um, succumbing to this and we getting cannot, worse symptoms? No. No, we cannot say so. But in this critical time, I would not use so much antibiotics, to be honest. I would switch more to um, other alternatives if possible, because you know antibiotics are uh, chemotherapies. You suppress your immune system by that. Yeah. And you yeah. can work against that, but if the big virus is coming, I think it's a dangerous situation for people. Um, I, I, I know patients with Lyme need that, but you need to find a compromise. A good immune system is better um, than too much antibiotics in your body. I understand. Okay. Well, thank you so, so much. That was um, excellent information. Um, we will be sending out a newsletter. I believe you're preparing one this weekend. So we'll um, add any sort of further information to that that we have. And otherwise, for anybody who's new to the Academy of Nutritional Medicine, our website is aonm.org. And there you'll see now a button called um, COVID-19. And if you open that up, you'll see that it has um, a lot of details on the tests which we've received from Dr. Schwarzbach. Mm -hmm. And um, the helpline in the UK is the one to please contact or um, the, um, the, web, the website or the information button, which is there as well. There's a, there's a particular, um, you, you can also contact info at aonm.org. That will get through to us as well. So thank you very, very much, Armin. Thank yeah. you for taking time out of your hugely busy day. And, wish you and all very, very best to the whole team and to you especially. Mm. I wish you all a healthy Easter. Thank you. You too. Okay. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.